Hello and welcome to another episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And today we're going to be looking at major drug interactions with HIV antiretroviral treatment. And we're going to explain some of the uh, most important uh, drug interactions and also uh, learn how we can find out which particular uh, medications are safe uh, or not. But before we do anything, we're going to first look at what is a drug reaction. And so a drug reaction is anything uh, that uh, reacts with something else um, which is um, either not expected or uh, an effect that is expected that we don't particularly want. And so uh, if you're taking medications already, so any drug to drug uh, uh, interaction is obviously usually not a, a good thing. You can also have uh, interactions with food uh, and a common one with a lot of uh, medications, for example, uh, to warfarin, which is a, a blood thinner, is grapefruit. Uh, another interaction uh, between uh, drugs is with certain beverages and alcohol being a most common uh, beverage which um, a lot of drugs interact with. Um, uh, supplements and herbal medications, which we'll come on to later, and of course um, your normal medication with recreational drugs. Uh, either way, interactions can cause medications to be uh, more effective or can be uh, less effective. And, and usually it's the less effective ones we're more concerned about. So what counts as a medication? Well, anything uh, your doctor, nurse or pharmacist gives you. Also, any over-the-counter medications and over-the-counter medications where you have to ask um, going to a local chemist and ask your pharmacist uh, to give it to you. Uh, you don't necessarily need a prescription for, but it's important to tell any medic if you're on any medication what uh, over-the-counter medications you're on. Also inhalers, which are the uh, kind of uh, sprays uh, which uh, asthmatics or people with lung disease get, and also any kind of multivitamins, uh, whether it be uh, cod liver oil capsules or these type of um, uh, common uh, multivitamins that you can buy. Um, other medications as well, well, uh, any herbal medications, and I don't mean herbs that you necessarily smoke, uh, but uh, any kind of herbal medication you can get from health food stores. Uh, and of course, um, recreational drugs um, via cocaine, cannabis, etc., are very important to tell uh, your doctor, um, because some do have exceptionally nasty side effects um, uh, when they react to your normal medication. And of course, food supplements, uh, protein shakes, uh, etc. Uh, how many drugs actually are there? So a lot of people seem to be surprised that I can't seem to remember every interaction there is with medication. Well, uh, there's a reason for that. There's over 11,000 uh, medications. And so 11,000 medications all interacting with or effectively one another, uh, that's uh, 11,000 times 11,000, um, or possibly more than that, is that 11,000 to the power of 11,000. Either way, it's a hell of a lot of interactions, and no one is going to remember all of them. And now, although I say 11,000 different types of medications, different countries have different laws about different types of medications. And so some countries, there is not that many, there is only eight or 9,000, and in other countries, uh, which tend to allow more newer drugs through quicker, there could be up to around about 12,000. But it's a growing number and it's growing all the time. And so with all this amount of medication around and with uh, different types of foods and drinks, etc., there's a high chance of some kind of interaction. So, uh, and not every action is known and the vast majority will not be experimentally known. They'll only be uh, hypothesized because we know how the liver works, how the kidney works, etc. Uh, as you have to remember, some interactions are actually beneficial as well, although we won't see many beneficial uh, interactions today. In order to check which uh, interactions that can occur with your particular medications, there's a few websites that you can go on to. Now, one for just a general interaction checker is the BNF nice.org.uk. Now BNF stands for the British National Form Reading, and most of the world's medications are actually on there already. And it's a very, very good um, non-biased interaction checker. Now if you use a general interaction checker uh, from um, uh, the internet, please be aware that some of these are run by companies, and some companies will not necessarily tell you all the interactions or not all the medications that are out there. But the BNF is a very much a, an independent and well trusted uh, drug interaction checker. Uh, obviously, this is um, a HIV uh, video, 
and is concentrating mainly on HIV medications. And so there is actually a HIV uh, drug interactions checker. And the website for that is, as you see, hiv-druginteractions.org forward slash checker. And this is a particularly very good um, for looking at HIV medications. And we advise any um, uh, clinician of any kind and also any nurses that are prescribing and also pharmacists to look at this uh, interaction checker. It's also good for very uh, sorry, for hepatitis C medications um, as well. Uh, for patients, it, should, it doesn't matter if you have HIV or not, any patient, so I will eventually be a patient as well, you should uh, get to know your drugs, know what you're putting into your body, um, and you should always keep a list of your medications. Um, yes, uh, you should keep a hard copy, I know it's all very old fashioned, um, but you should put a hard copy uh, in your wallet or purse, um, and as well as a picture on your phone. And the reason why you keep a hard copy on your wallet or purse is because if you get run over and you're unconscious, um, obviously you're not going, people are not going to be able to unlock your phone to look at, uh, to search for a picture of your medication. Um, but if, they, if you've got a hard copy uh, in your purse or wallet, uh, what will happen is um, the nurses or doctors will go through your wallet uh, to find out what's there. And a lot of people go through the wallet on purpose to look for um, a list of medications. Um, and also you need it for clinic visits and hospitals. There will be situations where you will see a doctor who doesn't know you um, or the notes have been lost or the computer system's down and they can still make uh, good decisions uh, if they have a list of your current medication. So it's also uh, important to keep a hard uh, copy uh, with you at all times. Now uh, for medics, uh, the reason why you check uh, interactions is because, well, mainly to be safe. You know, at the end of the day, we don't know what medications will be uh, good for a patient. We don't know what medications uh, are actually going to work for that particular um, patient. Um, but we will try various medications to try and get a desired effect, whether it's um, making someone breathe easier, whether it's uh, dropping someone's blood pressure or controlling their diabetes, or in HIV, suppressing their viral load but all drugs carry some kind of side effect. The beneficial side effect we're looking for HIV is the side effect of suppressing the viral load. The beneficial effect of, uh, of a blood pressure medication is dropping the blood pressure, but there can also be unpleasant side effects. So for blood pressure, you can drop the um, blood pressure too low. You can get lightheaded, dizzy, or even faint. Uh, and there's also side effects for antiretroviral medication, for example, um, nausea, uh, sometimes vomiting, uh, bad dreams, uh, insomnia, uh, etc. And it goes on and on and on. So we don't know what these reactions will be, um, but we also know that sometimes certain medications joined with other medication can make some of these side effects worse. So you should always use an interaction checker. Um, also, you're prescribing the medication and it's your responsibility. Uh, and to turn around and say this is a known side effect if you bother to check on an interaction interaction checker and some harm is caused to the patient and you never bother to check on an interaction checker and quite frankly probably don't have a leg to stand on. Sorry. Um, uh, so um, regarding HIV medications now uh, it's a very specialized area and the vast majority of uh, doctors will not know HIV medications and you don't have to. Um, that's why there, there is interaction uh, checkers there. Um, and uh, the HIV uh, drug interaction checker uh, from the Liverpool database is one of the, uh, the best ones out. So um, what do you do if you think you've got interactions between your medications? Well, if it's an emergency, you call an emergency number, whatever that emergency number is in your country. Um, now, if it's life-changing medications, such as antiretroviral medication or transplant medications, then there should be a hotline you can call. Uh, and that hotline won't necessarily be open 24 hours a day, but uh, you can call that number at the first opportune moment and tell them what the problem is. Now, if it, uh, now, please remember, if it's an emergency, call the emergency number. And if it's important, something exceptionally important like transplant medication, don't stop your medications. Okay, you have to keep um, uh, carrying on with them. 
obviously antiretroviral medications are also very, very important to continue. So I'm not advocating stopping in uh, no way. What I'm advocating is uh, making sure you make a sensible decision. Um, and that would be to speak to the people who prescribed you the medication and get in contact with them uh, first. If it's only a little bit of slight nausea, then you might just have to suffer with it, but keep on taking the medication um, uh, if it's safe to do so. Usually it is. Um, and usually you can phone uh, the hotline to speak to uh, one of the practice doctors or nurses in the clinic who's giving you the medication. Um, if it's a medication that you have bought and you're self-administering, um, then uh, just ask to speak to your uh, doctor. Uh, also look at the interaction checkers, but if it's, if it's a medication you've bought and it's making you feel not too great, then uh, perhaps uh, stop it. Um, but it's also important that any, medica any medications you're thinking of trying or any supplements you're thinking of buying, um, please um, uh, put them through the interaction checker. Ask your doctor, practice nurse, pharmacist, whether it's safe to, do, to take these particular meds. OK, so the main interactions with HIV medications. So there are more than 30 antiviral medications out there. That's quite a lot. And they're split up into six drug classes. And each uh, class of drug tackles a different part of the HIV life cycle. And I go on about the life cycle in another video, so I'm not going to do it now. Um, in all the subsequent slides, you're going to see this line of uh, medications starting in the far left um, under boosted protease inhibitors uh, and they go all the way along to uh, nucleoside or nucleotide reverse transcript, uh, transcriptase inhibitors and so ABC on the far right stands for abacavir, uh, FTC or 3TC and tricytopine or nividine, uh, TAF for example stands for um, uh, tenofovir, uh, but it's, this is a real uh, friendly form of a tenofovir, and the TDF is the tenofovir you find in uh, Truvada, for example, okay, tenofovir DF, and uh, ZD, um, ZDV is azovudine, and they say sometimes known as AZT, but each particular three uh, letters um, uh, refers to a particular medication and they're split up into their particular classes. So protease inhibitors on the left, followed by non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, something called entry inhibitors, uh, MVC stands for Mavaroc, uh, integrase inhibitors, dolutegravir being the popular one there, and on the right hand side, uh, those other uh, drugs which we uh, talked about in the beginning. So to just have a, a quick uh, Regime of what these particular drugs do. So the protease um, uh, blocks the protease enzyme and that uh, stops uh, the immature HIV viron from maturing into an adult HIV viron. And it's only the adult HIV or the mature HIV virons that go on to infect um, uh, other cells. And now the reason why it's boosted protease inhibitors is because PI is on their own um, uh, actually aren't a great drug. Uh, they have a low barrier to resistance, but if you boost them uh, with a drug called ritonavir or copecystat, ritonavir or copecystat blocks um, uh, a liver uh, enzyme, and most notably something called the CYP3A, um, and it's important um, uh, to know that what it blocks these liver enzymes um, because it makes the uh, protease inhibitors a lot more uh, stronger and it's a lot more effective drug and that's and it's these boosters uh, that actually give protease inhibitors um, a very high barrier to resistance okay so it, it makes them a very very good drug but if they block the liver it makes them more prone to adverse effects and interactions uh, with other medications so non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, they block the reverse transcriptase enzyme directly. And so um, the RNA is not read or translated into DNA. The integrase inhibitors, they block the integrase enzyme that stops newly formed DNA uh, into, so, so it can't be integrated into the host DNA. And then you've got nucleoside and tied reverse transcriptase inhibitors, which disrupt the conversion of RNA to DNA by substituting the nucleotides. Uh, again, this is explained in other videos I think I've done earlier on. Um, and you've also got entry inhibitors, and they block the something called the CCR5 co-receptor. So for HIV to get into a cell, there's two receptors, a CD4 cell, sorry, a CD4 receptor on the CD4 cell, and the CCR5 co-receptor. And Mavrock blocks the CCR5 
uh, receptor on this particular cell. Okay, you've also got your fusion inhibitors that stop the HIV envelope protein from fusing with the CD4 cell. So there's two types uh, of entry inhibitors there, and that's where you get your six from. Okay, so uh, if you look into the HIV drug um, uh, database, uh, the livable database, you'll get um, you can get these particular graphs. So you go on to further resources and um, uh, interactions by um, uh, uh, treatment, um, and then we'll just go through it alphabetically of the various types. I'm only going to pinpoint uh, the major. Um, uh, interactions okay and so for analgesics um, there's very little interactions between um, uh, non-opioid uh, and uh, opioid analgesics but there is particular one and it's a drug I've never personally uh, um, prescribed and I've never actually seen it being prescribed before so I think it's quite a specialist drug and that's dextro pro um, proxyphene uh, uh, and you're you can't prescribe it with anything that contains a booster. So if anything that contains Cobicista or, or Ritonavir, uh, you can't uh, use that particular drug and it causes those drug levels uh, to go up. Okay, so, so that's the major um, uh, interaction on that one. In terms of anticoagulant, antiplatement uh, drugs, there's a lot more interactions here. Uh, and so the important one is clopidogrel. So clopidogrel is used for people who are taking heart stents on the outside of their heart. And if you take clopidogrel and you're also taking a boosted drug, so something that contains uh, cobicista or ritonavir, it reduces the drug levels of clopidogrel. What that means is, well, if you've just had a, a heart operation and a stent uh, to unblock a heart, uh, it will not what's called endothelialize. And so the stent will block off quite quickly. And so if you're taking um, um, a boosted um, antiretroviral and you're taking clopidogrel, you uh, either change your um, antiretroviral, or if you can't do that, you, uh, the cardiologist must change you off of cl uh, clopidogrel. And a good alternative that people use is um, uh, Presigrel, uh, which is also a very good antiplatelet um, agent. There are also other antiplatelet agents out there uh, with vaxorobin and um, uh, apixaban, uh, which, if taken with uh, boosted uh, antiretrovirals, increases the level of the anticoagulant, uh, which may increase um, the chances of a bleed. OK, so it's also something to be uh, concerned about. In terms of antidepressants, um, so a lot of antidepressants uh, can cause something called QT prolongation, okay, or elongation. Um, and those are the little black dots, they're actually little hearts. Uh, and, and so it's, it's quite dangerous to prescribe these uh, tricyclic antidepressants with these particular types of antiretroviral. Now, when I say it's quite dangerous, what it means is a lot of the time you just use a lower dose of tricyclic antidepressants. So if you actually are using, for example, amitriptyline uh, and you're on um, atazanavir, uh, then all would happen is you would lose, you would use the lower dose of amitriptyline to start with a lot of the time, okay? Um, if you have to use higher doses, then people will go, um, tend to be monitored with an ECG just to make sure everything is generally OK. But I want to draw your attention to the line at the bottom, which is a, a big red line with lots of big arrows pointing downwards. Um, this is a very dangerous interaction. People always think um, that taking herbal medication is harmless because herbs are natural. Well, the vast majority of medication out of those 11,000 drugs, the vast majority of them are from herbs. And so herbs uh, are not harmless. Uh, they are very, very beneficial. And medicine is built uh, on effectively at the back of herbal medicine. But St. John's wort decreases near enough all the antiretrovirals. So, so if you're taking St. John's wort um, for depression and you are also happen to have an antiretroviral medication, and there's only a couple um, which are, uh, for example, um, uh, tenofovir, uh, DFM, tricytobine, etc. Uh, 
So if you're taking Travada as a, a prep to prevent HIV and you're taking St John's wool, chances are that will probably be okay. But that's the only only real um, time you could probably take it. A lot of the time, taking St John's wool with any antiretroviral is bad, bad news. It suppresses uh, the drug content in the body, which makes it far more likely uh, that you will not be suppressed if you're if you have um, HIV which means the HIV will become resistant uh, to your medication. Uh, and so St. John's Wolf's a big no, no, no. Um, the other thing as well regarding um, uh, St. John's Wolf is if you start taking a not tell a doctor and you do get a bit of um, a viral increase, um, the reason why it's quite dangerous is because it suppresses all so many medications you can quit. So even if you're taking, for example, dolitegravir and Travada, um, the HIV will not be suppressed by the dolitegravir, which is a very high barrier of resistance. Travada doesn't have a particularly high barrier to resistance, and so you could end up becoming resistant to all three, which means you then have to go on older drugs, which could be bad news for you uh, in terms of a lot more side effects. Um, so please uh, no St. John's Wort anyone. Uh, it's not a good thing anyway. Um, so anti-diabetic um, uh, medication. Um, there's a lot in the press about metformin. And so if you look at dolitegravir and metformin, it's got uh, increases um, uh, uh, metformin by 79%. So there is an interaction between dolitegravir and metformin, but this is probably a beneficial reaction. What that means is you can use a small amount, the smallest dose of metformin, uh, and then uh, try to treat the metformin up if you happen to be on dolitegravir. Okay, it doesn't mean you can't use it, no, you can. Um, there's um, uh, a red one using uh, atazanavir uh, with uh, 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 repalmoglide, which is difficult to pronounce, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a uh, endocrinologist. Um, and that is um, uh, the only contraindicated uh, diabetic uh, drug. A few of the GLP antagonists reduce uh, the viral load and again um, and that's with um, uh, PI boosted uh, atazanavir. Um, apart from that vast majority of all the other drugs are fine to take uh, if you're uh, diabetic. So with anti-malaria drugs um, the only reason why I'm putting an anti-malaria, although this is being filmed in the UK, obviously um, there's a lot of HIV in uh, the malaria affected countries around the world. Uh, and so uh, if you are going to give an anti-malaria um, medication, uh, please be aware of the effects it can have with um, HIV medication. Okay, that's the only thing I'm going to basically say on the anti-malaria. Uh, so antipsychotic medication. Now antipsychotic, there's a, a lot of cross reactivity because a lot of antipsychotics cause acute prolongation of the heart, and they could be made much much worse uh, if you're taking um, some other drugs um, in terms of for HIV. So it is important to realise this interaction, and maybe best if someone is antipsychotic and has a choice, maybe to stay away from the PIs. Okay. Uh, now most of the interactions are with boosted PIs or boosted integrators. In other words, any medication that contains Cobicista uh, or Raltogravir uh, and should stay away from those medications. So quetiapine, uh, bad news with a, uh, uh, an integrator or a PI that's boosted. Okay, and Pimazole is also another bad news drug. Now these are fantastic drugs to take. They're very, very useful and they're very, very handy. As I don't, I'm not saying someone shouldn't be on those drugs like quetiapine. I've got a few patients on quetiapine myself, um, but what they're on, they're on an integrase uh, regime like dolitegravir, Bictavi. Um, and they tend to be on dolitegravir or Bictavi simply because um, dolitegravir and Bictavi have a higher barrier to resistance, unlike raltegravir, which has a lower barrier to resistance. Okay, and also the NRTIs, um, so Abacavir, Travada, etc., Tenovavir, um, TAF, uh, they seem to be fairly safe with antipsychotics. Okay, so go on to the next one. So the anti tuberculosis, uh, anti TB drugs. Uh, so here uh, it's, it seems quite uh, messy and uh, the messiness is in the, uh, the lower area. And so in terms of uh, rifampicin, 
and uh, rifapensetin, um, uh, these tend to reduce uh, the effectiveness of the antiretroviral drugs. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, you don't use it. So with uh, rifampicin, uh, it says it reduces it by 54%. Um, and so the easy way to get around that is you just double dose dolitegravir. And so you take dolitegravir twice a day. 50 milligrams in the morning, 50 milligrams in the afternoon. And the antiretro, uh, sorry, the uh, NRTIs at the far right of the screen generally tend to be kind of okay. But of course, uh, if you are going to give any kind of TB treatment, um, just look at the uh, drug interactions to find out which would be the safe way to go because the drug interaction checker does advise what to do with a particular medication. Uh, and there's usually also alternatives you can use um, as well. So, um, so you've got um, uh, antioxidant uh, treatment selectors. Um, uh, generally, they're uh, they're fine, apart from uh, two drugs, which is uh, midazolam and trizolam. These particular drugs, um, they're, they're the danger ones. You don't use with a PI or a boosted regime. And this is a common theme. So, as you probably know, really <laughs> realise by now. Although PIs and boosted PIs are terrific drugs, I've got lots of patients on PIs. If they're on lots of other medication, you've got to be very, very careful. That's the main thing. You just check the drugs. So lots of interactions here between Copacister and Ritonavir. And there's a couple of no-nos, Midazolam and Trizolam, uh, with Copacister and Ritonavir. These are the uh, big drugs. But you need those boosters to make those particular drugs uh, effective. But of obviously an integrated regime um, with um, an NRTI backbone for example, um, TAF, uh, which is uh, backbone Discovy, or Travada, which is um, Tenofovir, um, are all uh, good options to go now. So bronchodilators for COPD. Generally, you can use anything you want apart from two things, and they are at the bottom of this particular slide, um, and they are inhaled corticosteroids. And I'm going to come on to them a little bit later. Um, but just to mention their names, um, buda, buzonazide and flu, um, flutisazone. Uh, if you're on ritonavir and cobicistate, you can't use them. OK, they're a big no-no. Uh, they block uh, that enzyme pathway, the CYP3A, uh, and they can cause uh, adrenal suppression and Cushing syndrome. OK, so they are a massive big no-no because they increase the dose of these steroids massively because the body can't break them down. I said I'm going to go into it later, but I've uh, probably covered it here now already. So, <laughs> uh, cancer therapies, I'm not going to go into uh, with great detail. Um, the general rule, if in doubt, use NRTI and a raltegravir based regime, it tends to be the safer option. Sometimes you can use dodetegravir, um, but again, it depends on which particular um, uh, uh, cancer therapy you're using, but you really need to then look at the uh, Drug Interactions website uh, for, uh, for cancer treatments. So in terms of contraceptives, um, efavirenz is a big no-no, unless you're using an IUD uh, or the depot injection. Uh, but other than that, oh, and also um, uh, <coughs> uh, the longer acting uh, drugs tend to be kind of okay, but if feverins you tend to stay away from. If someone's on um, an integrase or uh, with an NRTI backbone, it tends to be uh, safe. Uh, again, corticosteroids. Um, so here, um, uh, like I said, which is usually an uh, inhaler, um, uh, budenolide and mometazone are no-nos with cobacistat or ritonolide. With hormone replacement therapy, generally it's fine. Uh, no particular problems unless you're on atazanavir uh, boosted with copacistat and um, uh, dirospinadone, uh, uh, but otherwise uh, you should. It's generally a um, safe area to be in. <coughs> Anti, uh, antihypertensive medication. Um, there's a small uh, red line there. I can't actually uh, remember the particular drug. Uh, but the vast majority of individuals, uh, if they're on a calcium channel blocker, um, you have to be very careful if you're on a PI. That's the main thing. Um, also, beta blockers, 
with PIs and ritonavir and covacistat-based medication can be a little bit uh, funny. Um, but if the patient uh, with antihypertensive medication is on dolitegravir or raltegravir, that also tends to be fine. So immunosuppressants, uh, I'm not going to go uh, through just to show that there is immunosuppressant um, uh, matrix there. And also for lipid lowering uh, medications as well, in terms of simvastatin and lovastatin for uh, PIs um, uh, is, is a big uh, no-no. Uh, and you have to change the medication for that one. Pulmonary antihypertensive, be very careful with things like Viagra, uh, with um, uh, boosted um, uh, PIs or any kind of boosted medication. Okay, and antiretrovirals and recreational drugs, uh, again, you, I'll direct you to the, uh, the website. So here's a, some of the list of some of the great websites I've put together. And I hope you've enjoyed this particular episode. So please uh, like, subscribe and share. And thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye and good sexual health. Take care.